The Chinese philosopher Confucius left a legacy of wisdom from which there is much to learn. When he spoke about the qualities of a superior man, he referred to a person of any gender who is honorable, polite, and wise. Confucius spoke about qualities like compassion, harmony, integrity, and respect. He was a firm believer in the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Let's look at how he describes the superior man. Which of these qualities do you have or would like to have? Number 18. Modesty. The superior man does not boast or praise himself, but rather quietly focuses his attention on the job at hand and gets it done. Other people's opinions of him isn't really of any concern to him. He doesn't need anybody's approval. He remains humble regardless of how successful or famous he becomes, what kind of job he has, what kind of car he drives, or how expensive his house is. Those things are not what it's about for him. He remains a modest human being, thankful for the opportunities that have come across his path. Number 17. He notices the good in other people. The superior man chooses to focus on the positive aspects of other people instead of their flaws. This doesn't mean he's unaware of the flaws, but he realizes the positive aspects are more important. There are many people who seem to find the mistakes that others make irresistible. They keep going back to them, keep reminding others of their imperfections. The superior man does not feel a need to do that. He's in a good place and happy to let others be their best selves. He knows that if others are doing well, it doesn't take anything away from him. Number 16. His mind is calm and steady. He knows and understands himself. Reflection is something that he does regularly. He is not scared to admit his own challenges and shortcomings. He doesn't feel the need to be perfect, and he's not going to pretend either. He's a human being after all, so perfection is out of the equation. He is able to control his mind and not let his fears or emotions run away with him. Number 15. He finds beauty in ordinary things. He doesn't have to chase after fancy or expensive things because he can appreciate the beauty of simplicity. Many people are constantly chasing after new and better things, caught up in a race that is exhausting and that never really ends. The superior man knows better than to chase rainbows. He can just look around him and appreciate who he is, where he is, and what he is experiencing. Number 14. He wants to gain wisdom. When you gain knowledge, it opens doors for you. But knowledge in itself is limited. It refers to specific ways of organizing ideas. Wisdom is something completely different because it is about interpreting knowledge and looking deeper. It is a more integrated way of using knowledge to gain understanding. Wisdom is not connected to getting qualifications or degrees or certificates. You can't always pinpoint it exactly, but you'll acquire a calm, unhurried understanding of life if you have wisdom. Number 13. He is aware of what he knows and doesn't know. He doesn't think he's an expert in everything. He never pretends to know more than he actually does. He understands that he will always have much to learn and that there will always be knowledge out of his reach. For the superior man, that's okay. At least when you're aware of what you know, you can figure out what you're missing out on, what you'd like to focus on and learn more about. Number 12. He seeks fulfillment within himself. He understands the potential for greatness within himself. He doesn't need to look for it elsewhere because it doesn't really exist in a single place anywhere. Fulfillment must be nurtured and discovered within himself. It's a slow and unhurried process. Number 11. He does the right thing. When there is a choice between doing what is right or making a profit, the choice is simple for him. He chooses to do the right thing. When he's not sure what the right thing to do is, he still tries. He approaches the world and other people with integrity. Through his actions, he shows respect towards himself and others. Number 10. He is self-aware. He is conscious of who he is, aware of his own limitations, strengths, and weaknesses. He is not ruled by ego or subconscious beliefs. He understands how powerful his mind is, and it must be used correctly. He knows that self-awareness is liberating and invigorating. Strength comes from within. He doesn't have to chase it. By the way, if you're finding this video valuable so far, then make sure to hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And why not subscribe so you can keep learning more? It's free. Number nine, he does not feel the need to take sides. He is not necessarily for or against anything. He doesn't follow the crowd, but rather remains neutral, unaffected in his own lane. He doesn't get swept up by this idea today and another one tomorrow. The streams of popular opinion flow past him, but he is steadfast. 
The only intention he has is to be virtuous. Number eight, he thinks carefully about who he wants to associate with. Some people are open to your message and others are not. The superior man understands who he should be speaking to and not to waste his breath on people who are not interested and just want to keep repeating their own stories all the time. When people do not share the same level of consciousness, he just lets them be and does not make an effort to engage with them or change them. He knows the importance of the company one keeps. You are known by the people you spend time with. He is selective and cautious when making his choices. Number seven, he is dignified without pride. The way in which a man carries himself says a lot about him. For the superior man, dignity is important. It shows the inner strength that he possesses, his approach to life. His ego does not control him. Number six, he can adapt to changing circumstances. He is not set in his ways. He understands that sometimes you have to go with the flow. You have to be open to new ideas, new ways of thinking. Some of the old ways may still work, but they will probably not be useful forever. You have to be open and receptive to a changing world and developing circumstances. Number five, he acts before he speaks. It is more important for him to get things done than to talk about his plans. He just gets on with what has to be done and achieves his goals. Some people spend so much time talking about what they would like to do and achieve and they don't actually put in the time to finish anything. The superior man is focused on action. He wants to make things happen. Number four, he doesn't get stuck in belief systems. He has an open mind and is open to new ideas. He does not feel that he has to do everything according to other people's beliefs. When the majority of people in a society share the same belief, when they all behave or dress similarly, it can be difficult for one person to go against it, even if he strongly believes that the group is mistaken. Belief systems can become a way of life, just the way things have always been done, almost like a habit nobody ever questions. The superior man does not get caught up in that. He makes up his own mind. He decides what works for him and what doesn't. Number three, he is humble. In his dealings with other people, he is respectful, kind, and just. His humility is not a show. It is real. He knows that he isn't superior to anybody else, no matter what appearances might suggest. Respect goes a long way. When you treat others with respect, eventually they start seeing themselves as deserving of respect and start being kinder to themselves. He spreads kindness and humility among all those he has dealings with. Number two, virtue is important to him. It is important for him to do what is right. He isn't focused on what would be the easy way out. Even if doing the right thing is more difficult, he has integrity and will not compromise it. Number one, he is not prejudiced. He is not prejudiced about other people or places. Every experience is an opportunity to explore, to see or taste or smell new things, to meet new people or travel to new places. He doesn't see the unknown as a threat. Only by being prepared to cross boundaries and try new things does he truly grow. And if you like this video, then check out these related videos to see more. And make sure to subscribe and leave a comment saying, I subscribed, and we will personally reply to your comment.